Hello, hello. Long time no see. I've been quite busy upgrading the NAS from this all the way up to that. The 6.4 gigabits per second that you see being displayed here is the right speed. The NAS is now fast to the point where testing it is difficult. I do not have the hardware required to give it a true test. I'll be nerding with all of the numbers, the tag, how I got to it and whatnot uh, in the video. Uh, in the meantime, let me bring you along as to how that uh, upgrade came to be, how I got there and how I made it. So the very first problem I had to solve is the HDD sizes. So these are 3.5 inches, quite standard, but they come in two different uh, widths. I suspect this one is not that used anymore, the thick one. Um, but all of the HDD caddies that you will see on computers, on servers and whatnot, do accommodate the, the big one. And they also accommodate extra space in between to allow for airflow to, uh, to go through. There's also 2.5 inches, which are very much used for SSDs more than HDDs at the moment. Uh, but I've decided not to uh, deal with those at all, but rather to stick with the, the 3.5. So the idea was to make a modular uh, mounting system where I could have these little spaces of, uh, of sorts that I would then insert in between the HDDs screw everything in place uh, firmly, remove the spacer, put it in front of the next HDD, put a new HDD in front, rinse and repeat, and hopefully have something that is considerably more compact, uh, allows for more HDDs by consequence, yet still allows for airflow to, um, to go through. So here's my solution, the variable HDD uh, mounting system. It takes in about eight HDDs depending on the width and what you're looking at is half of it. There's another symmetrical half that needs to be put onto the other side and 120 millimeter fans are, are screwed in front of it to ensure proper heat dissipation of the HDDs. So printing it was not something I'd qualify as fun. Um, both of them, left and right, can fit on a 30 by 30 centimeter 3D printing bed. That said, I do recommend tree support and only for the flat surfaces and not for the screw house. It takes about a day and a half to print and 980 grams of plastic with this configuration. That said, I'm very pleased with the result. It worked really, really well. Additionally, I designed stencils. It's this light gray plastic you can see on the screen. And they are to ensure that the holes I drill on the back plate will be done correctly on the first try. The combination of the fans, the thick plastic and the screws to hold the two halves together are to ensure that the HDD rack is very rigid and will provide support to the back plate. On the previous design, the two racks had to be held together by metal wire, which you can see just here, because otherwise they were so heavy that they started bending the plate downwards and thus putting stress onto the motherboard. I also ended up designing and adding my own big spaces in order to deal with the clearance issue the previous design had. I'm accelerating the background footage quite a lot because disassembling the previous NAS and reassembling it with the new setup took a lot of time. That said, I come in prepared with the previous experiences and the stencil and it was just long, not difficult. I was able to mount a total of 16 HDDs in that rack and using the spaces I showed you earlier in this video, I was able to accommodate for the different sizes of the various uh, HDDs I was using. In order to mount all of those new HDDs, I very simply used the spare LSE card that I had, allowing me to mount an extra eight HDDs on the PCIe slot. Reassembling the NAS was not easy at all, with the most difficult part being the cable management at the back. I had to do the best I could, but it was really difficult. An important point about this HDD rack is that it has less gaps in between the HDDs than your regular rack. In order to make sure that there was correct airflow in between the HDDs, I had the idea of enclosing the front and the sides 
putting in three fans and betting that the static pressure generated by the fans and the lack of gaps would ensure proper airflow all around the HDDs. A problem that was coming up fast was the heat management. The previous setup had a precariously hot glued fan to the LEC card and it worked fine, but now I was about to have two and a networking card. My solution to that problem was to design an adapter that would allow me to screw a 120 mm fan to the PCIe cards themselves and then add a shroud to the fan in order to redirect all of the airflow through the heat sinks. Additionally, I decided to go all in on the go big or go home and designed an extra side holder for the HDDs in order to hold an extra two HDDs. I also designed its own stencil, but a lack of foresight caused me to drill right through the motherboard holder. That said, not a critical place and honestly not a big deal overall. I then did attempt to put in a little bit more effort into the cable management as I knew that otherwise the cables may be an issue while trying to mount the computer back in the rack. At last I was able to fully mount the shroud that I showed you earlier, although this time I flipped the fan around. Previously the fan was pointing downwards and I was a bit concerned that this may cause issues with all of the airflow in the rack. So I flipped it around to ensure that the air would be pushed up. Now that I had plugged in a total of 18 HDDs plus the one SSD for the operating system, the shroud, all of it, I attempted to boot the computer and I encountered a weird issue, which is that the computer just could not figure out which one of the drives that was connected was in fact the one that housed the operating system. So I had to unplug everything, only leave the SSD, let it boot once, switch it off, plug in everything again and somehow it worked. I'm still really confused as to why everything happened but so far the SSD has been turning on and off very consistently. And at the long last I could install the crown drill of this entire project, 10 gigabytes networking. So this is a Cisco switch and that is a 10G PCIe card. Okay. I'm just going to pause the time lapses here because it's time for a little bit of dirt and I've been waiting for this since <laughs> the start of the video. So, unbeknownst to me, here's the previous setup I had. So, computer, Ethernet, random switch, Ethernet, the NAS, and then the HDDs. So, I was using good old Ethernet and this was the switch that was linking all of my machines uh, together. And... I did poor maths, uh, although this time though it was in my favor. Um, I did poor maths and what ended up happening was that the um, I calculated that I had 800 megabytes a second of write speed, whereas in fact it was one gigabyte. The difference is that when I plugged everything with the good old 10G uh, connections, I was expecting uh, two, maybe 2.5 uh, gigabits a second of writing speed, and I would have been very happy. When I put these little guys, this is, these are like S, these are called SFP plus um, connections. They do 10 gigabytes. They are the big brother of the, the Ethernet, as you can see. Here's my little connector. Here's the big connector, which by the way has an even bigger connector, but let's not go into that just yet, at least. Anyway. Once up like this, I had 6.4 gigabytes of writing speed, way over what I was hoping for. It came with a good problem to have. I don't have anything to test the damn thing. So 6.4 gigabytes is the only thing I can test because the only thing I've got fast enough to send all of that uh, data to the um, uh, to the NAS is my main computer using a NVMe SSD and it maxes out at 80% of its reading speed. Writing to the NAS is 80% as fast as my SSD can read. I don't have anything to test it in the other way. I don't have anything that's capable of ingesting the, the data. I'm hitting bottlenecks left and right. 
I don't have the graphics cards that's required to ingest all of the, the data because it needs to be processed. It's a good problem to have, let's be honest. <laughs> that's it. The only clue that I have that I can, in fact, get a lot more out of this system is that the when copying from the NAS to the NAS, so no networking anything, no other computer involved, I get about 10 point something gigabytes a second of uh, write speed. So I do, in fact, have somewhere else in the line at least one major bottleneck, if not uh, many. Uh, that said, the numbers are really satisfying. So back with uh, all of the, the tinkering and the, the time lapse. I kept having to change fans as I kept finding fans that didn't work. And as you can see on screen, I also added two small fans for the two HDDs and the small rack. Cable management was pleasantly easy for the fans as I had this gap in between the HDD rack and the aluminum base plate. So I just crammed everything in there and called it a day. In all of this though, while taking out and then putting back in the NAS, I did damage my Pi KVM quite a lot. And the now new lack of space made it really tedious to fix. I do intend on designing a PCB for that, but that's for another video. And now, more numbers. So, here's the power usage of the Pi KVM while I boot it and then when I use it. The power does peak at around 405 watts, but only very briefly, and that's all of the hard drives that start uh, spinning. Then the power usage seems to be roughly 235 watts when idling. When transferring a big set of files to measure the power usage, I peaked at around 850 megabits per second on the transfer speed. That said, file size really has a huge influence on the speed and depending on if small or big sizes the speed does fluctuate the power consumption during the file transfer fluctuated between an average of 270 and a maximum of 280 watts for this test i gave the nas through the ssd a 32 gigabyte folder containing many files and all of it was transferred within one minute only so after all of this nerding i'd actually would like to compare the price of my nas compared to stuff that i can get off amazon like i can buy a synology ready to use nas how do i compare it to that so I'll be listing all of the elements one by one, including stuff that I've received for free, at which point I'll try and speculate on the price a little bit, but that's going to be vague. I can only be precise on what I bought. So for starters, the 10G card that went on the NAS was 15 euros. The Cisco switch was 99 euros. Technically not part of the NAS build, but I still needed to run the 10G connection. Uh, the LSC cards, so those to read a total of 16 uh, drives from the NAS, that was 64 euros. The SFP cables, 40 euros. 10 HDDs that I bought off eBay, 98 euros. I did receive 8 HDDs for free from all of the computers that I've disassembled. One SSD of 100 gigabytes for the operating system, 9 euros. An other SFP card, but this time a uh, Windows compatible one, 48 euros. I included all of the plastic because I did do a lot of 3D printing for all of that, about a kilo and a half of plastic, which comes to around 30 euros ish. The hardware, so the aluminum backplate and uh, the rest of the metallic stuff, uh, 15 euros. I also had the computer for free. Uh, I'll put zero for now and speculate on the price later. So total comes to around 420 euros-ish. 
let me compare to what I can find on uh, Amazon. So unsurprisingly through Amazon, you can see that the prices are pretty much all over the place. It really depends on your needs. Not many people want to have uh, super, super high speeds, uh, obviously. Uh, but the 10G ones, the ones that do compare to what I did, will start at around um, 700, 600 euros or more. And none of them have HDDs. You need to buy the HDDs and you need to buy all of the equipment to get to uh, 10Gs also. So in a very broad sense, Minus is really competitive uh, compared to the stuff you find on Amazon. That said, a few caveats. First of all, I didn't include the price of my computer and eight of the HDDs as announced because I got them second hand for free. Prices are going to vary a lot if you have to buy it or if you can get one uh, free. I did, however, include all of the 10G networking uh, equipment, which is a little bit less than 200 uh, euros, which you would have to buy anyway if you wanted 10G speeds, even with the Amazon uh, stuff. But overall, I'm really satisfied. I mean, I got everything secondhand. The hardware is 11, 12 years old, which is just mind boggling when it comes to computers. It's really odd. And it runs at a very, very appreciative uh, speed. I do think I've kind of maxed out what I want to do with the, the NAS. On the next videos, I'll be looking at other topics such as like custom PCB designs, automated server management and whatnot. I've got a few plans with all of these uh, computers. Uh, but yeah, overall, the experience was incredibly satisfying. I wasn't expecting to transform a very old piece of hardware into something that's that competitive. Thanks again for watching this, uh, this video till there, and see you next time. Bye-bye.